I'm nobody's taking your data bits except me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, everyone. Welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I've been stone joined every week by Jill Bryant and everybody. We're just hanging hello, out in hello. the pre show. If you like to watch that and you want to catch the after show, you can always check us out on patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. But man, we got a lot to unpack this week. We got Linux kernels, ATI updates, Audacity's getting big brains with AI, and yeah. <laughs> somebody tried to use a Raspberry Pi for like two weeks and made a fatal mistake. <laughs> yes. Jill was very excited. Uh, one of your favorite games got a fan-made mod that came out yeah. Saturday previously, didn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So it's a Portal Revolution, and you know it's it's a great mod that you know, has a standalone game on Steam. And it is just actually so nice to be playing Portal again, especially after playing all the other mods. I'd gone to gone through every other mod and I was waiting for something new. <laughs> so I was excited about that. And as you can see, Portal is my favorite game, Portal and Portal 2 games of all time. Uh, I got a Portal Cube right behind me. So, <laughs> and... Here's my turret. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> no, I just love, love, love Portal. I like first-person puzzlers. And um, I've also then been really enjoying CES 2024 coverage. There's been lots of good announcements. Some of been which, going on, hasn't it? Yeah. So, some are things that, that they announced last year, but now we're actually going to see them you know, out in the public, like, for instance, Asus is launching, finally launching motherboards of connectors on the back. And actually, they're also announced GPUs with the new power connector on the PCI rail. So uh, in order, of course, to do that, they have to make a motherboard, which is compatible with that connector. And you will have to buy an, that Asus GPU with the motherboard if you want the connector on the rail. But if you don't, you could still use the card, you know, like you, you do in any other build and install it and then um, uh, use. They, they were going to have some other connector for it, too. So you could, could put it in a, a, any case, <laughs> so in any motherboard. But anyways, that's really cool. And also, I was impressed with the Asus ZenBook Duo dual display OLED laptop. And what's really cool about it is the bottom side has a keyboard that you can snap on one of the laptop screens and if you don't want to use it in laptop mode you you can uh, pop off the keyboard and use it externally for a dual monitor setup on the go i think that is really cool that's something that i personally have been looking for and they that was an ingenious uh invention and way to do it <laughs> i love it one thing I did on uh, Saturday, though, I told everybody, like right before the show, and I told everybody I was working on it last week, getting ready to roll it out, is the Interfacing Linux Web Zone. Now, I want to put together a site for all of our Linux compatible hardware, audio stuff, video stuff, uh, all the software. How do you get digital audio workstations? How do you get your OBS stuff? How do you get your capture cards, your audio interfaces? You name it all in one place. And I wanted to make it slick, responsive, looking good, something Linux users can go to and be proud of. So I've been rolling that out and I lit up the forums cool. yes. Saturday. I'm like, okay, don't break it, but just go and see if you can get the registration. Oh man, I, I said that on Saturday and somebody immediately like clapped back on me on Sunday. Oh no. <laughs> they, they hit me with an email and they're like, well, I, I don't, I'm not going to be able to, I don't know how they were able to type with this much um, tinfoil wrapped around them. Um, they, it was not going to register because of WordPress and all the oh. privacy concerns. Jeez. And I'm like, uh, yeah. all right, first off, all of our websites are self-hosted. Like they're yeah. not at wordpress.com. Nobody's taking your data bits except me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep them safe. And um, you don't have to worry about any of that but if you do want to head over there it is up it is up that's our interfacing web zone for our video listeners uh audio listeners i'm at interfacing we got the categories put together it's reasonably responsible 
there's a, a bunch of stuff that I still need to catch and I still need to fix, you know, but it should pop up and have all of the information. And I'm porting a lot of this stuff and you're like, wait a minute, where did all this content come from? This is stuff I've been doing for years that a lot of people had no idea about because it was on a Linux gaming site. Mm. And uh, here it is. It's something that you can search, stick together, but more importantly, something that Linux Emcast was never designed for. This is interactive. So not only do we have comments, we have a form. Yes. The forms, all of it's integrated. And my new favorite person in the world this morning, Team Linux 01 has already, because I have a place for site feedback, this is where I want people to head right now, if you get a chance. He, she, them, they've been going through like, hey, this is broken, this is broken, this is broken. And I'm like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, I, nice. Uh, you know, Sweet. stuff that I want to see. But the forums yeah. are going to have spots for video, audio, you know, all, all the basic stuff that you would might run into being a content creator on Linux and questions that you might have. And I want to have a, you know, not Discord server, not on Reddit or whatever, collection database, ad free, you know, just that knowledge base of what works on Linux and different problems, something that you can search through. And uh, it won't be kludgy or clunky. And, you know, I've been meaning to do this for, I went back and checked. I said I was going to do this three years ago. Yeah. I remember you talking about it then. Like, yeah. We're going to get going. <laughs> and, um, well, here we are. Here we are. There's still a lot of work to be done. Uh, the stuff I am moving over to interfacing Linux, it's taking a while because it's a very manual process. And also I'm mm -hmm. updating all of this stuff. Because mm -hmm. guess what? Linux changes pretty quick. Yes. <laughs> and and even that's a wonderful thing. <laughs> something I did like six or seven months ago. I'm like, oh, we need to go ahead and update that and make it modern. So I want that resource mm -hmm. to be available for everybody. If you do get a chance and see if you can sign up, if you want to make sure you get your username and uh, Take a look around, see if anything's broken, and let me know in the site feedback on the forums or if you have questions. Uh, one thing I will promise you, until my dying day, you know, if you're like, hey, I got a question for you. And, you know, I've been doing shows on Linux with streaming. I've learned a lot over the past 13 years. By no means am I the expert or definitive source, but I do know a lot. So if you do post a question about something, I will respond to you there. I give you my guarantee, and hopefully other people will too. Who knows, you know, you build it, maybe they'll come, maybe not, but at least you got to try. So interfacinglinux.com, go check it out and yes. check it out on mobile. That was something I yeah. forgot today. That was a notification. It's like, yo, uh, the logo is not mobile responsive. I'm like, correct. Um, let me fix that. So yeah. now it is, you know, little <laughs> things like that, that I'm not going to catch. And uh, yeah, if you have questions about audio, video, software, capture cards, single board computers, or if you just want to post pictures of ships. Yep, which I did. <laughs> the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> so we, we have a uh, dedicated forum just for ship posting. So if you want to do some ship posts, uh, we got it. And uh, plenty of ships up and going. There's uh, Jill. Yeah. There it is. And, and by the way, Ven, I actually did uh, create my account on mobile, on my cell phone. It mm -hmm. should work yeah. relatively well on mobile. Yeah. Um, with the forum software and with uh, what passes for a theme, it's not correct to call it a theme. I spent some money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh. And the forum's very neat. The software with the plugins that we're using, because right. it allows me to mark stuff uh, very github -y as like fixed, won't fixed, or investigating, and to keep track of things like that. And I want that resource there because I don't like things getting memory hold in Discord. We don't know what's going to happen to Reddit. And like, hey, let's just get everything in one spot and see if it works. But yeah, there you go. Interfacinglinux.com should be going live Friday. And by live, I mean I'm going to feed the sitemap to the Googles and the Bings and the Ducks and everything. I don't think, I think DuckDuckGo just does their own thing. Mm -hmm. Let's have some fun. And uh, yeah. There we go. I, I'm definitely going to be uh, kind of like there eh, and for a couple more weeks until things. Yeah, you're going to be it. really busy. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right, let's get into it. We got a curl out. Kernel yeah. six point seven. It's official, not an unofficial, not a bootleg release. You don't have to go buy this kernel in a back alley. Yeah. Somebody who looks a little <laughs> bit shady. You got to watch out with the penguins in the trench coats. Yes, absolutely. 
Yeah, so on Sunday, once again, Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux, released Linux Kernel 6.7. And it's actually one of the, yar- the largest yet. Some of the big news here is here we have support for a new file system. And I, I, ha- I, have never, I haven't heard it pronounced yet, but I believe it's Bcash. FS. <laughs> Does that sound right, Ben? <laughs> no, it's pronounced Stefan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so B <laughs> Bcache FS is a copy on write file system, which is supposed to be safer than ButterFS and faster than ZFS, which will be uh, fun to uh, experiment with and find out. And uh, kernel 6.7 also features the newly added NVIDIA GPU system processor firmware, which actually includes better power management and performance increases for RTX 20 and RTX 30 series GPUs. We did throw it out. I mean, this kernel is going to allow the GSP firmware, and we've talked about that a couple of times, to yeah. actually get loaded uh, for your 20, 30, and 40 series NVIDIA GPUs, which is going to enable something that what be- it's a you can look at it as performance. You know, if you've been running the Nuvo drivers, you do know one of the downsides is the clocking utility. Mm. Is you more than likely your GPU is just running at full tilt, powered on, hundred percent. Let's go, like in the old days. This yeah. is going to allow the NVIDIA GPUs for the twenty, thirty, and forty series to do reg- regular clocking, like you'd get with the binary driver. Yeah, so if it's not nice. doing anything, it's going to unwind. However. However, I mean, we've talked about it on Linux Gamecast, the from the NBK. If you're thinking you're going to install this and you're going to start go and play some video games, and unless you're looking for a new hobby to experiment with, with stuff that kind of, sort of works sometimes, don't rush out just yet. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> keep things tempered. I, I don't want anybody listening to the show. It's like, boom, I'm going to blow away my NVIDIA install and set yeah. this up. Uh, if you do, set it up on a spare box to play around with it like we used to back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe uh, practice playing those, you know, AAA titles on it and seeing actually what the numbers are, which are probably not very good. <laughs> but uh, there's also native support for Intel Meteor Lake graphics, which is really wonderful for people with laptops featuring that first generation Core Ultra processors. And another big thing, and this was important to me because I do have an Asus ZenBook. If you have an Asus ZenBook laptop circa 2022 and 2023 and, you know, had a really hard time getting the Cirrus CS3 14.1 audio amplifier working on Linux, well, the Cirrus developers made a commit in the Linux kernel so that there'll be better support for the chipset and you should hear audio now through the speakers. (laughs) That's really awesome. So I'm looking forward to to getting this new kernel and installing it on my 2022 Asus ZenBook. Pretty nice. Now, blast from the past. Maybe you have a vintage GPU collection. Yeah. So if you still have an older ATI Radeon video card from the early 2000s running in a machine, well, chances are, like mine, it still works great on Linux. But with recent updates and patches from the open source community coming soon, it will work even better. And it will be supported on modern Linux distros, <laughs> which is awesome. In this quarter, the open source Mesa 24.0 graphics library will include the driver updates for ATI's R300 through R500 series of Radeon GPUs. And by the end of the year, you'll be able to use the new drivers on your ancient ATI video card. (laughs) And there are probably lots of, honestly, lots of servers and old computers around still running them. Um, I actually have have, uh, two computers with ATI, old ATI cards in them (laughs) that are running. So it makes me happy. But I think this is this is really great that the community kind of took this over and making sure to update these cards. Somebody was sitting around looking mm-hmm. for a problem one weekend. This <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's how this is good. Because, I mean, this is a 22-year-old GPU. Now, there's been variations, laptop iterations of this um, particular architecture on down the road. You know, R3000 through R... No, 
not 3,000, listen to me, R300. 100, yeah. R500. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of an interesting little bit of a surprise <laughs> that they got, man. Um, so, a uh, dude named Pavel, what this does is it's going to um, move most of the remaining back end lowering over to near. So, that's your shader compiler stack, effectively, to drastically oversimplify things. At the end of the day, the card should go burr slightly better. I mean, I saw people bring up efficiency and they like, it'll be more efficient. I'm like, well, about as efficient as a 22 year old Jeep you could ever dream of being, which is not much. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's still fun to see stuff like this, right? It really is. That's the beauty of Linux, you know, keeping the old hardware going. And, and even when uh, old hardware, you know, like floppy drives get deprecated from, from the Linux kernel, there's a community comes in and, and creates a new one. <laughs> Now, if and Linux could just figure out how to do that with software, we'd be in good shape, wouldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you might have heard of our next story topic. Uh, it's a little program called Audacity. Yes. Wave Editor. Been around forever, ever. And it's cross-platform. So, you know, you might have used it on Windows. You might have used it on Mac. You might have used it on, you know, SGI Irix, um, HP UX, OS 400, um, even Windows. Quite possibly. Well, there's a new tool for it. This story is from It's Foss. All this is going to be in our show notes. If you want to go back and take a look at it, AI tools are here for open source audio editor. Audacity, now equipped with AI tools. Say AI again in the title. I dare you. I <laughs> dare you. Oh, Intel has released some AI powered plugins. Uh, this is using their Open Vino. And what do we get? A couple of different things in this. You get music separation plugin, a style remix plugin, noise suppression plugin, and, um, one that's kind of interesting, a music prompt generation plugin. So you can like make some sick tunes, man, or an ill beat, and you'll get something that sounds like a cat and a, a refuse bin being rolled down a hill, probably. But <laughs> it's going to be there. And of course, whisper for transcribing spoken yes. word or, you know, just generating lyrics, however you want to play around with it. Now, all you need to get this up and running, unfortunately, is uh, Intel because OpenVINO only speaks to Intel. And mm. no, I mean, it was what it is. So if you get an, and I couldn't find out if this even works with ARC GPUs. The best I can tell is I know for 100% that this is going to work with a recent generation Intel CPU. It, it will probably yeah. work with their NPU and uh, GPU stacks. The source, of course, is available with Linux build instructions. So that is there. And I want to say more power to those of you sticking with Audacity. Because I didn't uh, after, you know, I, I stuck around for a while after Muse picked it up. Mm -hmm. And about uh, nine months into that experiment, when Muse decided they were going to turn what was otherwise a perfectly serviceable waveform editor into a really, 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 really bad digital audio workstation, I cut it out of my tool chain completely. And that was not, you know, Audacity was part of uh, recording Linux Gamecast weekly, daily Wednesdays for mm -hmm. a better part of a decade. And it just got time. to the part where it was unreliable. And I'm thinking, mm -hmm. I, like, I, I can't be part of this, man. Like, once, once they get it figured out, maybe. But I'm going to say good on Intel. Open source uh, yeah. audio plugins. And good on the Audacity team for, you know, making sure everything is going to work. And if you have an Intel system and you want to play around with AI, TM, like everything's AI, man, I'm waiting for AI toasters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be hilarious. It's, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, this is actually really exciting news. And honestly, Ven, I was waiting for Audacity to have some sort of, you know, AI implementation uh, coming in the future. I, I knew it was going to happen eventually. Yeah, it's so, completely pointless, but here yeah. it is. Yeah. So I, I figured transcription was coming soon, but music generation per genre, you know, I really wasn't expecting. This could be another good source for music for podcasts and YouTuber videos and vlogs. I, I, I think that was just so cool that you could generate music <laughs> within Audacity. And it makes sense because a lot of musicians that, you know, are still using it. It's there. Go play with it. Report back. If I had an Intel CPU capable of playing with it, I would do some A-B testing, but I don't because, you know, I'm an NVIDIA shell, so I have a bunch of AMD CPUs. Mm -hmm. Have fun with that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm next. Is uh, Jill, do you have your Raspberry Pi ready to hold up to the camera? Uh, no, actually, I don't because it's in, the, in, in a project right now. So 
I didn't want to take it apart and bring it in. <laughs> Jill's finally plugged a Raspberry Pi into something. Oh, Good yeah. news. Well, I've been using it. <laughs> Good news. Why are we talking about Raspberry Pis? Well, Andrew has wrote a little story about his adventure, his journey over at Ars Technica, what he learned from using a Raspberry Pi 5 as his main computer for not one, no, that's peasant <laughs> rookie numbers, two weeks. And yeah, you know, you got to think about it. Like, you could almost get away with using Raspberry Pi 4 as a desktop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, everybody's played around with it. I'm sure if you get a Raspberry Pi 4 and you plugged it in, you're like, eh, all right, you kind of browse with it. I mean, it was close. It, it was close enough to where it would make you a little angry if, like, it was just a little bit faster. Yeah. And that's what Andrew mm -hmm. wanted to find out. Can't say I blame him. So, what do you do? Well, he decided to take this Pepsi challenge and, again, two full weeks. And I, I, I got all the way through the article, but I had to back up because something was bugging me. It's like I, I got it set up and I went ahead and put Ubuntu on it, but I kept having problems with Chromium and I couldn't listen to Spotify. Mm -mm. I'm like, uh, <laughs> why are you listening to Spotify through oh. Chromium? Then I went back and reread it. And it's like, well, because Spotify, there's no app for Spotify. Pi on the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, there there are several that you can run. <laughs> uh, not making this up. This <laughs> this is here now. This is somebody who describes themselves as an, in his words, advanced beginner range. Now you're, I know what you're thinking, but Finn, this is uh, you know, this is an X eighty six. I'm like, you're right, you're right, but you're running Ubuntu, Raspberry Pi. How did you not find the first Google result, hey, yeah. the first DuckDuckGo, <laughs> the first Bing result for Spotify Raspberry Pi, which is a snap from yeah. Ubuntu on Snapcraft where you just click install, my man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't. There's, do there's also a command line version, too, of a, a Spotify player that works really well. Yes, but. This is people who actually want to use something, <laughs> not play with it exactly one time and never use it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this, uh, the rest of the article, the rest of the article um, was a predictable tragedy of user errors. And I, I kind of checked out at that point because, you know, you, you can refer to yourself as an advanced beginner. And there's a reason I'm bringing all this up, but you can't come into Linux with the I got this bro or I got this sis mentality. It doesn't work like that. You will yeah. always have a experience very similar to what our friend Andrew had. Uh, just why isn't this working? Well, what did you do? Well, I applied what I knew about Windows to it or Mac to it, and it, I couldn't get it to work. That's the moral of the story. Um, Linux users, we are going to be able to get away using Raspberry Pi 5 as a desktop replacement in a bench. We could get away with it. Why? Because we're going to Google stuff. We're going to find stuff. You need that mentality to use Linux. You have to be curious and willing to do some searching because all the answers are out there. You know, but we also have realistic expectations of an ARM single board computer. And mm -hmm. we all yeah. enjoy a good troubleshooting session. Mm -hmm. We do. However, for my brothers and sisters out there running Windows or Mac users, and you want that out-of-box experience. Now, this ends kind of positive, but yes. and by positive, yes. I mean... He says, why don't you go buy an x86 and 100 x86 system instead of a Raspberry Pi? And that's positive, I guess, for him. But if you want to play with the uh, magic dark arts that is uh, ARM, mm -hmm. yeah, you need to get an Android tablet or a Chromebook because that's, <laughs> that's where you, an advanced beginner should start yeah. their journey <laughs> with Linux if they're not going to do the Part B of the equation. And when you say Linux is not ready, that's what a lot of people mean. Yeah. Because yeah. it will not survive contact with um, confidence based on nothing. You know, it, Linux is a advanced complex operating system. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the reasons I get, I push back a lot when we really try to dumb that interface down to make it super user friendly because it's still going to break. And if you don't teach the user at least some, you know, a rudimentary understanding of what's under that and how to at least begin the troubleshooting process, they're just going to wipe it and reinstall Windows. Yeah. That's what happens. That's what really happens. 
So, so true. My advice for Andrew is to get your pie back out. Get back on whatever search engine you decide you want to use. Answer these questions because everything in there has got a solution to it. And you're going to learn so much more on that that you can use in so many other things. This is one of the beautiful things about Linux. You don't want Linux to just work. Maybe you do. Yeah. Again, buy a Chromebook. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Tinkerer's OS. You know, that that's you you want to want to learn your operating system. You want to get in the guts of it. You want to play around with it. That's you know what what makes Linux so much fun and and exciting when you achieve those the goals of you know figuring how to out how to do something in the in the terminal or in GUI. You know, it's just it's part of the fun of using Linux. All right, beautiful people. <laughs> That's going to do it for this episode. If you like what we do, you want to get some bonus things, you want because we're about to go into the after show, you want a copy of that in podcast format, you want to watch the video a week early. Head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Pick a level. Then you can hop into our Discord. You can come play Trek Mania with us on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah. Bunch of other bonus things I like to throw in as well. Thanking you for your support. Yay. <laughs> Go check it out if you get a chance. But that's going to wrap us up for this week. And hey, go check out interfacinglinux.com. We're getting started on a whole new thing. It's Probably going to be a wild ride. Or mm -hmm. Buckle up. Exciting. We'll see you there. Let's do some credits, Joe. Yeah. We have lots of beautiful people to thank, including our advisors, Omegas and Artharan. Our Artharan's in chat right now. Our executive producers, Barbrandt, Scott M, Atomic. Our Chicago Kicks people, Empty, Blasphemia, Nubbin, Super Dust Howl. <laughs> and our Sea Monsters, Veritune and Justin, Hakeem, David, Darkwing, System T. And our Death Notes, uh, Benjamin, Doom 2 Wad, Stephen B, Dirty Dean, <laughs> and our Chairlings, Douglas H, Thomas T, Beastway. You gotta focus Yay. on one a week, then we can do a super cut and you'll have the entire thing down for the chair. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> hey everybody, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>